Hey everybody, this is Mr. Bortnick for AP Calculus AB. We are in unit two, differentiation, the definition and basic derivative rules. Today's topic is 2.5, applying the power rule. Enjoy today's notes. All right, for our 2.5 section on the power rule, uh, we should get excited. This is gonna be one of those days, uh, one of those lessons that when you think back to your time in AP Calculus, this is one of those ones where it's like a foundational great moment because uh, we spent last week uh, or the last couple of lessons talking about how to find the derivative of a function and we mostly used limits. We mostly used this definition that said the limit as h approaches zero of f of x plus h minus f of x all divided by h. And so we remember that this gives us sort of this limit of this uh, average rate of change equation, which approximates the instantaneous rate of change. As that h approaches zero, we know that it's giving us a better and better approximation of the slope of the tangent line. Um, but as we mentioned in those previous lessons, we said that uh, you know we're not gonna always take limits in order to find a derivative. In fact, there are some shortcuts, uh, which we're gonna start learning today, which are gonna really help us find derivatives a lot faster and make these problems a lot easier. So I'm gonna start with uh, some functions. So we have uh, four functions here, x squared, x cubed, x to the fourth, and x to the fifth. What I'm gonna actually do is I'm gonna write the derivative of each of these functions over here. I'm gonna ask you to take a look and try to find a pattern. So here are the derivatives. If I were you, what I would do is I would take a moment to try to think about for our original function to its derivative, what pattern or rule do you notice for each of these? If you need to pause to take a look, try doing that now. But if you're ready, um, my hope is that you would notice that uh, whatever the exponent is, right? Whatever the exponent on the x is seems to be decreasing. So we notice that this was a squared. Now we've got an x technically to the one here. There's no exponent, so that's x to the one. That x cubed turned into an x squared. That x, four, x to the fourth, when we took the derivative, had an x cubed. x to the fifth, when we took the derivative, had an x to the fourth. In addition, these exponents that are here appear to have become the coefficients of each of these terms. So that x squared, the two came to the front, the three came to the front, became a coefficient, four came to the front, and the five came to the front to become a coefficient. So this leads us into this thing that's called the power rule. How do we generalize this? Well, let's imagine that we've got a function that is x raised to the nth power. What happened to the exponents when we took the derivative? Well, the exponent became the coefficient. So that n is going to become a coefficient and then multiply by our x value. And then as what we said, we said the derivative uh, that the exponent decreased by one for each of these. So the way that we can write that is if n was our original exponent, we can say that this is x raised to the n minus one power. So the rule, the power rule for derivatives is that if I wanna find the derivative of x to the n power, any function, that's sort of like a polynomial function of this form, that that's gonna be equal to n times x to the n minus one power. So an example of this, you know, uh, we can go right into these examples that we've got right here. Um, easy examples, y equals x to the 37th. If we wanna take the derivative of that, we can call that y prime. Um, and so that derivative, we would bring the 37 down as a coefficient, we would multiply that by our x, and then we would subtract one from that exponent. So that would be raised to the 36th power. So this would be the derivative of y equals x to the 37th power. And remember again, what is a derivative? We know that we can use this function here to find the slope of the tangent line at any x value for our original equation. So if I wanted to find the slope of the tangent line at x equals five, I would plug that in for this equation here and it would be incredibly steep because we had a five raised to the 36 power. It'd be very, 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 very steep. Probably almost looking like a vertical asymptote with how steep that would be. Um, let's try this one over here for number two. So we've got y is equal to x 
raised to the ninth power. Um, I'm going to use my different notation. Remember, uh, we can uh, call derivatives by a bunch of different names. Y prime is one. Another way that I might call it would be dy dx using that, uh, that Leibniz notation. Um, and so that's equal to, we bring that nine down as a coefficient. We multiply it by our x, and then we subtract one from that exponent. So that's going to be nine times x to the eighth power. And again, this derivative function can find the slope of the tangent line at any x value we want. Okay, so we've got some not so easy examples here. Um, the key for these types of problems when we're doing them, all right, so we can see very easy examples where, where they're set up, where it's just an exponent ready to go. We can use that power rule and do it. Some of these require us to rewrite the equation in order to actually find the derivative and in order to use that power rule. So the first one that we've got is this equation y is equal to one over x. So y is equal to one over x. Um, we know from our exponent properties that we could actually write this as y equals x to the negative one power, right? One over x is the same thing as x to the negative one power. Now the reason why I'd wanna rewrite it this way is now, you know, it's just a x being raised to an exponent. I can use that power rule in order to do it. And so if we take the, if we take the derivative, AKA differentiate, we could say that that dy dx is equal to, well, what's the exponent? Negative one becomes the coefficient times x raised to the negative one minus one, that's gonna be negative two. So that would be our derivative function. But generally we know we don't leave a negative exponent in our answer. And so we're gonna simplify this to rewrite it. And we're gonna say that this is gonna be equal to negative one over x squared. So that would be our derivative function for y equals one over x. Nice. What about number four? Well, we've got one over x to the fourth. This is very similar to uh, this one over x problem that we've got. Uh, again, the way that we would use the power rule for this problem is we would need to rewrite it first. This is the same thing as y equals x to the negative fourth power, right? By, because that, uh, if we move that x to the fourth up to the numerator, that's gonna make that exponent negative. So if we differentiate that using our power rule, I'm gonna call that y prime, that's gonna be equal to negative four, which is our exponent, times x raised to the negative four minus one. So that's going to be to the negative five power. Again, if we wanna rewrite this, that's gonna now be negative four divided by x to the fifth power for that derivative function. Um, for number five, uh, just a reminder that we can always rewrite radicals as uh, at fractional exponents. So the way that we would rewrite number five, that square root of x, is that this is y is equal to x to the one-half power. It's x to the one-half power. So if we differentiate, we can call that y prime again in this case. Well, the exponent is one-half, so that's going to become the coefficient. And then that's gonna be x raised to the one half minus one. One half minus one is gonna become negative one half. And if we want to then rewrite this, that would be one over two x to the one half power. And if we wanna to try to simplify that even further, we could say that this is one over two square root of x. So I would say that y prime is equal to one over two square root of x for the uh, y equals square root of x function. Um, how would we, we rewrite number six? Well, we see that this is the seventh root of x cubed. It, we can again rewrite these radicals as fractional exponents. This is the same thing as y equals x to the three over seven. Now again, the strategy in each of these problems is I'm trying to rewrite each of these original equations so that it is in like this polynomial form where it's just an x raised to an exponent because that's gonna allow me then to use this power rule. If I don't rewrite them, then I cannot use the power rule uh, in, that, in that case. You know, notice here that for number four, a very common misconception is that sometimes people will just try to use the power rule in the denominator. I cannot actually do that. That's not gonna work uh, in the denominator for this case. I must rewrite this equation before I differentiate it. Um, but let's finish up number six. If we take the derivative of y equals x to the three over seventh power, we'll call that dy dx. Again, y prime and dy dx are the same thing. Uh, let's call that, so the exponent is three over seven, and that's gonna be x raised to 
the, I'll, I'll write it over here, 3 over 7 minus 1. 3 over 7 minus 1 is going to give me, uh, let's see, 3 over 7 minus 7 over 7. So that's going to be negative 4 over 7 as that exponent. So here's my side work to see how I, how I found that. Um, so negative 4 over 7 is the exponent. And again, if we want to rewrite that dy dx is equal to 3 over uh, 7. So 3 over 7 times x raised to the positive 4 over 7. And if we want to write that as a radical, that's 3 over 7 times the 7th root of x to the 4th. So 3 over 7 times the 7th root of x to the 4th would be our answer for that one. Nice. That's going to be our, uh, our medium level examples here. So not as easy examples uh, that we've got here. Let's get that to go away. All right, so let's get to some tricky examples. What are some like tougher values for this? Uh, the suggestion here is to simplify first, then take the derivative. So here they're telling us, okay, f of x is equal to x divided by the square root of x. Find f prime of 7. All right, so if I'm going to take the derivative of this function, and really the only rule that we have right now is, is the power rule, I need to be able to write that equation as x raised to some power. The fact that this is a fraction is a little bit concerning because we don't have any rules right now for how to take the derivatives of, of fractions or the derivatives of uh, functions where there's a numerator and denominator. So what am I going to do? Well, first off, I'm going to take that denominator. I'm going to rewrite that as x to the 1 half power. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my properties of exponents. One of our properties of exponents says that if you're dividing two things of the same base, that you can combine them by subtracting their exponents. So this is the same thing as x raised to the 1 minus 1 half power, which is x to the 1 half. So this is still f of x. And then what we're going to need to do then is take the derivative. Uh, in fact, this is one of the ones we did before. This is 1 half times x to the negative 1 half power, if we use that power rule, aka, uh, I guess I'll go over here. That is 1 over 2 uh, square root of x, if we do that. So that's my f prime of x. And they're asking us to find f prime of 7. So f prime of 7 just means I need to plug in 7 for my x. That's 1 over 2 square root of 7, uh, which, if we multiply by root 7 over root 7, is going to equal the square root of 7 over uh, 2 times 7, which is... 14 in that denominator. So the square root of 7 over 14 would be our uh, f prime of 7. That would be the slope of the tangent line of uh, that original f of x equation when x is equal to 7. Number 8. We've got the cube root of x times x cubed. Find f prime of 8. Again, we don't really have a rule right now of what we do when we have a function being multiplied by another function. Uh, that is coming later in this chapter, but you know, there's a way that we could do this a little bit easier, and that's by rewriting this as a single term. So how do we do that? Well, this is x to the 1 third, and then that's being multiplied by x to the third. What we can remember is when you multiply two things of the same base, that uh, you add the exponents together. So f of x is going to be equal to x raised to the 1 third plus 3 we think about what 1 third plus 3 is, we can rewrite that as 1 third plus 9 thirds, right? because 9 over 3 is, is the same thing as 3. And so since those have the same denominator now, that's the same thing as 1 plus 9, which is 10 thirds. So this is x to the 10 thirds power. Now that we've rewritten this as a single term with an exponent, we can just use our power rule to find that derivative. So f prime of x is going to be equal to 10 over 3 times x raised to the 10 thirds minus 1. So 10 thirds minus 1, that's going to be 10 thirds minus 3 over 3. So that's going to be 7 thirds if we do that. And so if I want to write that uh, as a radical, that's going to be 10 times the cube root of x to the 7 over 3 for that function. So that's going to be f prime. And we want to find f prime of 8. 
So this is going to be 10 times the cube root of 8 raised to the 7th power over 3. If I don't have access to a calculator, we know that we can uh, evaluate this uh, either by taking that 8 and raising it to the 7th first, or by doing the cube root first. You could pick. Since I don't have a calculator, I'm going to take the cube root of 8 first. We know that that's going to be 2. So this is the same thing as 10 times 2 raised to the 7th all divided by 3. And then if we want to think about our powers of 2, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, 128. So this is going to be equal to 10 times 128 all divided by 3 or 1,280 divided by 3, which would be our uh, answer for this problem. I don't think that simplifies to be a whole number, so I'm going to leave it as it is. All right, number 9, parallel tangent lines. Ooh, if we think back to Algebra 1 or Honors Algebra 1, we might remember one of the rules that says that parallel lines have the same slope. They have the same slope. So if they're telling you that these tangent lines are parallel, that means they have to have the exact same slope. So what are they giving us here? They're saying f of x is equal to x to the fourth, and g of x is equal to x to the third, at what values of x do the graphs of f and g have parallel tangent lines? So we know that uh, to find the slope of the line, that we would need to take the derivative. So let's say here, uh, let's take the derivative of f. f of x was x to the fourth. That means that f prime of x is equal to 4x to the third. And g of x was x cubed. So that means that g prime of x is equal to 3x squared. If these are going to be parallel to each other, if those functions are going to be parallel to each other, that means their slopes have to be the same, which means that these derivatives would need to be the same. So I'm going to set these equal to each other, and I'm going to solve. So let's say here that we've got 4x cubed is equal to 3x squared. Well, how do I solve this? Let's get everything on the same side. 4x cubed minus 3x squared is equal to 0. I can factor an x squared out, so this is x squared times 4x minus 3 is equal to 0. And then so that gives us sort of two ideas, the first being that x squared could be equal to 0, which means that x is equal to 0 would be one answer. And the other, uh, the other case would be 4x minus 3 is equal to 0. So 4x minus 3 equals 0, so 4x is equal to 3, and x is equal to 3 over 4. So there are two places uh, where that would be, where they would have the same slope. One would be at x equals 0, or the other at 3 over 4. That would be my answer for this problem. That's it for today. You've got some practice. We've got some uh, answers uh, that have been posted. Check your work. Uh, come to class if you've got any questions, and then try out your mastery check. Have a great rest of your day, and we'll see you later.